Hi, my name is Rebecca Rife. I'm really glad that you're joining me. Um, today I want to talk a little bit about Jonah. Um, uh, have you ever felt so angry with someone that uh, the very thought of having to go share the gospel with them it drives you to a point you're so angry that you would just rather die than see that person repent and, and come to God. You would rather that God be on your side and be angry with that person, just as angry as you are that, uh, you know, he, he's the Jesus that you um, see eye to eye and those people are just like scum off the bottom of your shoe and you just, they've done you so dirty and done you so wrong that the very thought of forgiving them and moving past the anger that you have and then sharing the gospel with them and, and having them repent and, and have a relationship with God is enough to just make you want to die. You'd rather die before going to that. Well, that's exactly where Jonah was. Jonah was so hateful to the Ninevites and so angry with the Ninevites that the very thought of forgiving them was just painful for him. And he ran away from God's calling because he did not want to share the gospel with them. He did not want them to repent. He wanted them to go to hell. His, his and it was uh, it was basically you know, he was he told the Lord that he was angry enough to die. He, you know he was the, he would rather be dead than see them repent. He would rather be dead than see them, or or even forgive them. That's how much anger that Jonah had inside him. That's how much, uh, and you know, I have been there. People have done me wrong to a point where I was just like, the very idea of having to forgive them and the very idea that maybe God might be using me to share the gospel with them someday. And that was just like, don't you dare, Lord. Oh, don't you dare. And the Lord had something to say to me, you know, as students of the Word and followers of Christ, He's our teacher, He's our master, and a student is not above their teacher, a servant is not above their master, and our teacher, our Messiah, our master, our king, our savior, hung on a tree and forgave the very people that were murdering Him beat him beyond recognition, and spit on him, mocked him, ridiculed him, and killed him. And he forgave them while they were doing it. And we are not above him. We do not have the right to hold on to our anger and un unforgiveness. Now does that mean that we should uh, lose all boundaries and, and let those people back in our life and uh, no No, it doesn't that's not what it means, but it does mean that We're gonna love them We're gonna Hope them the best we're gonna forgive and let it go we're going to move on and Not carry that around with us. Is it a tall order? Yes but isn't that the beauty of it, that we cannot do it on our own, but we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And Jonah, he was so angry with God, so upset because he knew there was a reason why Jonah ran away before he even got there. He ran away and didn't go there because he knew, he knew that if he was the one used by God, to share the gospel with the Ninevites, they would listen. And why did he know? Why did he know? Because Jonah hated them and they knew it. They knew Jonah. Jonah knew them. He was not some stranger coming into the town. They knew him. He knew who they were. They were people that came and pillaged their towns and robbed them, raped them. They came through and trampled through. They were enemies 
of Israel, and they were constantly harassing them and oppressing them and coming against them and being just as wicked as wicked could be. And he could not stand them. And he knew that if he, of all people, went and told them that the Lord said, the Lord said to repent or they were going to go to hell and he was going to wipe them all out. And he knew that if they heard the one person who had absolutely no motive to come in and share that gospel that he was telling the truth because they knew that he would rather see them die than repent and be saved but yeah here he was so he must have been sent by his God and they believed him and they repented and Jonah went up on that hill so let's go to chapter 4 Let's start off where Jonah goes up on the hill because we all know the story. You know, Jonah ran away. Jonah was on a boat. They ended up tossing him over the boat because he was the reason why this huge storm came. And, uh, and so he, he told the sailors, it's me. My God is angry because I'm running away from him and I don't want to do what he's called me to do. And so he jumped off the boat and God prepared a big fish. Fish came along, ate him. Jonah's in the belly of that fish dying and near death and at the doorsteps of death and getting ready to die and he squeaked out and he called out to God and he said a prayer that he was going to do what God wanted him to do and he was going to keep his vows to the Lord and then the Lord heard him and the fish spit him out he went into town and he walked through the town and gave the message of the Lord, was a servant of the Lord, a prophet of the Lord, sharing that it was time to repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand and it's time to repent or you're all going to be wiped out. They believed him. So Jonah went up on a hill and you know it's my take that Jonah went up on that hill because he was waiting to see him and hope that they wouldn't so he could watch them get all wiped out. And oh, he was angry with what happened. So I'm going to pick up right at the end of chapter 3. So here's the message that the king sent out after Jonah went through the second time. Get up and go to the great city. He went to the great city. He, um, gave the message that 40 days from then, Nineveh was going to be destroyed. The people of Nineveh believed God's message. So let's just start out with Jonah entered the city. He shouted to the crowds, 40 days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed. The people of Nineveh believed God's message. And from the greatest to the least, they declared a fast and put on burlap and show their sorrow. When the king of Nineveh heard what Jonah was saying, he stepped down from his throne and took off his royal robes. He dressed himself in burlap and sat in a heap of ashes. Then the king and his nobles sent this decree throughout the city. No one, not even animals from your herds and flocks, may eat or drink anything at all. People and animals alike must wear garments of mourning, and everyone must pray earnestly to God. They must turn from their evil ways and stop all their violence. Who, who can tell? Perhaps God yet will change his mind and hold back his fierce anger from destroying us. So the whole town went to town on praying and fasting and beseeching God to change his mind and not wipe them out. And when God saw what they had done and how they had put a stop to their evil ways, he changed his mind and did not carry out the destruction he had threatened. And here's where we're going to really pick up with Jonah. Jonah's anger at the Lord's mercy was intense. I mean, it was intense. So here we go. This change, this change of plans greatly upset Jonah, and he became very angry. So he complained to the Lord about it. Didn't I say before I left 
that you would do this? Lord, that is why I ran away to Tarshish. I knew that you were a merciful and compassionate God, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. You are eager to turn back from destroying people. Just kill me now, Lord. I'd rather be dead than alive if what I predicted will not happen. Jonah would rather be dead than watch those people repent and come to God. He was so angry and so bitter and so full of unforgiveness. And have you ever been in that place? That place where you're just so angry that what was done to you was just so wrong and and you were uh, oppressed and, and come against and maybe even betrayed and hurt so badly that your anger just burns and your unforgiveness burns inside you. It's an awful place to be. When we get to a place, and here's the beauty of God, He will work with us. He will work with us and help us to get to a place where we can step into forgiveness and come to a decision to forgive, to let go, even if the person's still at it, or even if they're not sorry, we can come to a place where we have compassion and let it go. We can come to a place where finding some kind of area in that person's life where we can connect and, and forgive. God is so beautiful that he will work with us to help us get to that place. And so, because he cares about us and he doesn't want us to be in that dark place. So here's the Lord's reply. Is it right for you to be angry about this? Then Jonah went out to the east side of the city and made a shelter to sit under and waited to see what would happen. And the Lord God arranged for a leafy plant to grow there, and soon it spread out broad leaves over Jonah's head, shading him from the sun. This eased his discom discomfort, and Jonah was very grateful for the plant. But God also arranged for a worm, and the next morning at dawn the worm ate through the stem of the plant so that it withered away. And as the sun grew hot, God arranged for a scorching east wind to blow on Jonah. The sun beat down on his head until he grew faint and wished to die. Death is certainly better than living like this, he exclaimed. Then God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry because a plant died? Yes, Jonah retorted, even angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, You feel sorry about the plant though you did nothing to put it there. It came quickly and died quick, quickly. But Nineveh has more than 100,000, 120,000 people living in spiritual darkness, not to mention all the animals. Shouldn't I feel sorry for such a great city? Isn't that beautiful? So the Lord used a lesson, a very first-hand experience lesson of a plant and a worm and as a comparison to show Jonah that he had no right to be unforgiving and hateful. There were a lot of people in that town who were innocent, the children and the animals who are not accountable to sin were being affected by the adults that were doing wickedly. So it's, when it comes down to it, it's not about us. It wasn't about Jonah. It wasn't even about what they've done. It was about the people that the wicked affect. And it was about the wicked themselves and their salvation. Their salvation was at stake. And the lives that they touched both animal and children were at stake. And there was more people in the town that were innocent than were not. 
and they were being affected by the whole thing. And so our lives do not just reflect upon us, but the people who our lives touch, it affects them as well. So when we're caught up in sin, and we're caught up in wickedness, and we need to repent, it's necessary for not only ourselves, but for the lives of the innocent that we connect with. And it, it's not about just us. It's about our salvation and the salvation of others. And we have no right. God is merciful and kind and loving and quick to forgive and quick to change his mind on destruction. He would rather that we would turn our feet away from evil and that he could have mercy on us. He longs to have mercy on us. He would rather that we start walking the righteous and right path and the straight and narrow and turn away from all the wickedness, not just for us, but for the lives of the people that we affect. Because it's not just about us. It's about the people around us as well. And so it was a beautiful way that God worked with Jonah to get Jonah to see. Now, it's like if this were, a, you know, a movie, that would be the worst ending ever, huh? Just like, there you go. <laughs> the end of the, the plot would be that, you know, God tells him that he has no right and shouldn't he feel sorry for all the people that, in the town that were affected. And then it's over. We never get to find out exactly what happens with Jonah or, you know, it's kind of left to our imagination whether Jonah came to a place of, of submission. I think that he did. After all, he was in the belly of that fish, and he certainly came to a place of submitting to God and be willing to do what God had called him to do. And so I think that Jonah did come to a place where God worked with him and he forgave. And, um, and plus, it blesses my heart to think that anyway. Um, we can all leave it to our imagination of how the story ended from there. But I just think it's a beautiful thing that God works with us to get us to a place where we're not having that kind of anger in our heart. And he will show us examples in life and he will show us signs and wonders and, and teach us uh, ways of uh, letting go and having mercy and compassion because that's who he is. He is mercy. He is compassion. God is both love and wrath and so it's very important that we need to remember that he's kind and severe and we need to turn our feet away from evil it's um and 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 even share that same gospel with people that um we don't get along with and forgive them be willing to share the gospel with people that uh and say you know worried about your salvation you know it's, uh, turn your feet away from doing what's wrong and do what's right and be concerned about one another eternity is a long time and uh, people's eternity are at stake it's not just about our anger and our unforgiveness and what that person's done to us and, and how we've been affected by it it's not just about that and so I hope you got something out of that I hope that it blessed your heart in some way. Um, I hope that you're uh, willing to look at your heart and examine your heart and see if there be any wicked way in you as far as unforgiveness and bitterness and anger. And just come to a place to be willing to work with God to let that go. I heard a message uh, from Beth Moore. Beth Moore was talking about how she had such a hard time with forgiveness and I knew the message was for me because she said that one of the things that she does is that she finds a place in that person where she can connect with them and have compassion on them and then she steps into that and then it helps her to get to a place and uh, it was a word for me because I started practicing that and it's working and so maybe I can share a, kind of a, a regurgitated message from Beth Moore that you know step into compassion and see if that doesn't help to come to a place of uh, forgiveness and, um, you know, l the l losing of your bitterness and letting go of resentment. And, and even to the point that if God calls you to, 
that you would share the gospel with that person and um, love that person enough to share Christ. And so, uh, and that's really what we're called to do, is to share the message of Christ and um, be a witness to God. And another way that we can do that is by living our life in a, a way that reflects that we are walking with Christ and we are becoming more Christ-like. And so the people can see that witness and uh, come to a place to know that God is real. If he can change us, he can do anything, right? And so I hope you got something out of that. I hope that it blessed your heart. And I love you all, and I'll see you again next time. All right, bye-bye.